today. And we just thank God for this day. We thank God for the opportunity to be able to share what God has given us Amen. to empower our youth. Because we know that you are still excelling in your academics and you're still excelling in your relationships and your finance. And we're here um, just to spread the good news about what God is doing and what God wants us to share with you all. So today we are starting our brand new series entitled Jesus is God. And let's say it together. Jesus, Jesus is, is God. God. And growing up, <clears throat> when we heard the name Jesus, yeah. you know, a lot of different things came to mind. Yeah, we all knew him like, okay, Jesus, you know, he was the carpenter. He was the carpenter. So, you know, he was the carpenter and Jesus was the nice guy. He was the one that, you know, he healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. And we knew him as all these great he things. He raised the, people from the dead. Now, that one yeah. was kind of spooky growing up. But yeah, the story about Lazarus and him raising Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, come forth, right? So yeah. we know Jesus to be a, a healer. Um, we also know him as walking on the water. Yeah, um, Jesus uh, in the Bible is known to be that person who walked on water. All right, And so a lot of these different things are things that Jesus did. But beyond what Jesus did, his miracles, we want to talk about how Jesus is God. Yes. And in fact, in Matthew chapter 16, um, verses 13, um, we know that Jesus is walking through a village with his disciples. So he's walking with his friends, and he asks his friends, so what are people saying about me? Yeah, the text says it like this. It says, who do people say the Son of Man is? Yeah, and so the disciples, you know, they replied and say, hey, some say you're Jeremiah. Some call him John the Baptist. Some say he was Elijah. And others call him one of the prophets. And the prophet is someone that hears from God. So they're saying, like, these are great things. Like, hey, you, you hear from God. So Jesus, he asked Peter a very important question. See, Jesus knew what he was asking. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus here is very strategic. I love this passage of scripture because Jesus is not really concerned about what well, people, people are, are saying about him, yeah. but he wants to know what's well, going into yeah. the disciples' ears. Yeah. Yeah. He what he are wants, they hearing? Yeah, he wants to know what are what is the people, his disciples, his friends, what are they saying about him? They're the one that walks close, walk the closest to um, Jesus. So he wants to know, hey, Peter. What so, are y'all listening to? Yeah, what are y'all listening to? What are everybody to? else saying about me? And then once he gets that information about what everyone yeah. else is saying about him, like, yeah, you walked on the water, you're a prophet, you you're are a cool you're a healer. Jesus yeah. asks Peter directly this yeah. question. And in the scripture, it says in verse 15. And so verse 15 says, but what about you? So he's asking Peter, so what about you? What are you saying? Messiah. You are the Messiah. The and son of the, the living God. God. And so he's saying, hey, the Messiah means you're the person that's going to come and save us. So he's telling Jesus that is what he thinks about him. That's what, and, and I think that is very profound that Peter thought so highly about Jesus. We know that he, does, he did everything, but Peter knew specifically like hey you are the messiah so you know and the only reason peter knew this is because of his relationship with jesus he walked so close to jesus that he had a revelation about who jesus really was and it, it goes on to say in the text yeah. that uh blessed are you simon peter uh because this was not revealed to you by flesh only by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And so Jesus is saying to him, you learn this information straight from God himself. God yeah. gave you this revelation about who I am. Yeah. And so we praise God for having a, a, a relationship with Christ yeah. so that we can know that Jesus is truly God. Um, another familiar scripture um, that makes us think about uh, who Jesus really is comes in, in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 12. And I'll just paraphrase the story. Uh, the story is of a man who uh, is paralyzed. Uh, and, and his friends brings him to, to the house where Jesus is preaching. And the house is jam-packed. It's packed. 
Yes. Many people in there, so nobody obviously couldn't come to the front door. Uh, and so his his friends does something radical. Yeah. Um, uh, at, at this time, Jesus had already healed um, tons of people. He'd already um, raised uh, uh, his friends from the dead. He's healed blind eyes. So Jesus had this reputation of being a miracle worker. And so um, the people was coming to see him. Everyone wanted to see, like, who's this man that's who healing? Wouldn't? And, and who won't want to see it? If something was wrong, they was trying to meet Jesus where he was. Exactly. Yeah. And so this paralyzed man, he 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 wants to do the same thing in hopes of being uh, delivered and, and, and being healed. Yeah. Uh, in fact, his friends in total desperation. Uh, and and also friends. They had great friends. Definitely great yeah. friends. And look at the extent that they were willing to go to to get their friend to Jesus. So they, they, they really do something crazy. They, yeah. they do something absolutely stupid. And they go through the door, or the front door, or the back door. They tore the roof off. And yes. that just, it, you know, that just makes me think about um, during this pandemic, um, how we can't do church as usual. Yes, anymore. and we have to do something that is totally different. And sometimes it may be, um, it, it's not the norm. And um, and that's what this story is really showing us yes. is sometimes we have to go and do something like radical and in order to get to yes, Jesus. To get to Jesus. And, and he calls and and through and doing that God will meet us and he actually will be there with us. To heal. Yes. And this man gets his healing. But um, the point that we want to drive home today is Jesus here is uh, teaching and when Jesus sees them tearing the roof off. Immediately, Jesus tells this man, he says this, your sins are forgiven. And this man is looking like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't come here to get my sins forgiven. He says, forgive, this wasn't what I was really concerned about. I just wanted to get healed, right? I just want to walk again. So then they ask the question, why did Jesus offer uh, this man's forgiveness, okay? Had this man done something uh, to offend Jesus? To understand this, we must understand that God created everything. Let's say that together. God, God created, created everything. everything. That means you, me, the world, yes. everything. And he created everyone in it. And so anytime we harm ourselves, we harm others, yes. or the world we live in, guess what? Guess who else we're harming? We're harming Jesus. We're harming Jesus. We're yeah. harming God himself. God created all of that stuff. So all sin is really sin against God. Yeah. Now that might be strange and hard to swallow, but all sin is sin against God. So if you cheated on your last uh, test before you got out of school, um, guess what? You yeah. sinned against yeah. God. Uh, if you punched your brother when your parents weren't looking, you you sin against God. Yeah. Or if you talk back to your parent, I don't know if I was guilty of that one. Um, yes, all of those were sins against God. And that's the bad news. But here's the good news. Because every sin is a sin against God, God also has the authority to forgive our sins. And so Jesus here, when he tells this man that your sins are forgiven, He's making a big statement. He's saying, I'm not just some teacher. You know, yeah. I'm not just some, some, you know, a man that walked on water. I'm not just a person, a man that healed or a carpenter. I'm not just um, some one, miracle worker. This miracle worker. But I am the one that forgive, can forgive you. Because Jesus sin. is God. Jesus is God. Jesus told the paralyzed man to get up and walk. He didn't just heal his physical body. He healed his spiritual body too. Yeah. And that lets yeah. us know yeah. that he's beyond just someone who can fix his line up. Yes, and who can physically do something for us. But um, Jesus, he can emotionally um, heal us. And he can change us and deliver us. And how we feel, whether it's um, depression or sadness or um, doubt, he's able to um, meet us where we are. So... Most times we think about healing, we think about 
physically being healed. Yeah. But um, Jesus is healing people, and he has healed people throughout the valley. He's healing right now uh, how we feel emotionally, yes. even on this pandemic. Yeah. He's, he's healing right now everyone um, emotionally and how we feel about things and, and uh, how we um, view things. And one thing that we have to also remember is that we all have it, um, experienced some type of unforgiveness or forgive, uh, yeah. um, forgiveness. And maybe you're thinking uh, right now about a time that um, you had to ask someone for forgiveness yeah. or you had something that you was um, dealing with. And uh, we all have forgave someone at one point. Sometimes we choose not to forgive people. Yeah. We can walk around with a grudge. And sometimes um, we're the one that need to be forgiven for what we have done. And um, today, you may be struggling with that. You may know someone that's struggling with that. But I want the point that um, I would like to make is forgiveness is something we often need to give as well as receive. Amen. Yeah, so forgiveness, forgiveness, yes. forgiveness um, for us means that we have... A, an opportunity to be free from that thing that bounds us, that binds us, all right? And when we don't forgive, we don't have the liberty to go to God and ask for forgiveness. So it's important that if someone has wronged us or we have wronged someone, that we ask for forgiveness. Because if we don't forgive others, our Father in Heaven can't forgive us. Yeah. And so we know today that Jesus is God because he has the power to forgive you. And so no matter what situation you're in, no matter what circumstances you're in, um, today is your day to receive his forgiveness. So we just want to encourage you, whatever it is, how you're feeling, or whatever is going on, you're going through the, um, and you may have done something that you may have, um, you know, stayed on the phone too long, text or said, uh, uh, we, we know a lot of things are going on um, through the social media. Right. You may have used something that was inappropriate. You may have seen something. You may have been engaged in something that's inappropriate. Um, but it's not the end of the world. And we want you to know Jesus that, is yeah. God, and He can forgive you. Yeah, and He's willing to forgive you. So as we get ready to close, no matter where you are in your faith journey, I hope this week you hear and consider how this. One claim can change your whole life. And that claim is Jesus is God. Yes. So if it's true, it means everything to us. So here's my question to you. Who do you say Jesus is? And if he is who he claims to be, how could he change your life? Yes. Who do you say Jesus is? Is he your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him to come into your life? If not... I think it's time that you give your life to Christ. We're thankful for our Hightown family for tuning in to this week's worship experience. We know that God is in control, and because he's in control, nothing's out of control. So until next time, let's continue to exalt Christ's everlasting love and make God proud.